It's the 2016 May Emmys, and these are your nominations. Gentlemen, there were many wrestling shows this year. What was your favorite? Chris LaRusso. I don't, want to talk to them. I, don't, <laughs> I don't want to talk to them anyway. <laughs> um, the the, ma- the uh, show of the year. Uh, I, I thought that the show of the year for me was TakeOver Brooklyn. All right, It was NXT's chance to prove that they could be a big-time player. If you remember when they, when they initially announced the show, they were only going to sell, I, I think it was like 5,000 tickets, 6,000. It, it was a, going to be a heavily... Um, parsed down uh, uh, arena. Uh, they're going to run in the same Barclay Center. Barclay Center uh, was going to be the same place as SummerSlam. It was going to be a uh, much different setup. The demand was so great that it ended up being, I think, eighteen thousand uh, biggest NXT show to that point. I think I think that record still stands. Uh, featured uh, Sasha Banks against Bailey in what was an absolutely fantastic match. Uh, Finn, uh, Finn Balor versus Kevin Owens in a ladder match. The show, top to bottom, was exciting. The energy in the crowd was infectious. It was possibly the, uh, it, it was the perfect storm. Just everything that evening clicked. Uh, it, it, and even for somebody who's, who's seen it all, uh, it, you couldn't help but get excited about that show. NXT TakeOver Brooklyn, uh, far and away, uh, my show of the year. Joe Dombrowski. Uh, you know, I'll go outside the box, and, and I will go with uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling Wrestle Kingdom 9. Um, you know, that was, uh, uh, I believe, in the very first few days of 2015, but uh, uh, the first New Japan pay-per-view available on a, a, a standard pay-per-view here in North America. Um, and, you know, four-hour show and, and, and top to bottom held my interest. And that's with me not really understanding uh, a, a lot of the backstory and not really being too familiar with a lot of the talent. Obviously, you know, I knew the guys in the top matches, Okada, Tanahashi, Nakamura, AJ Styles, uh, the junior heavyweight tag match with Red Dragon and the Bucks and Al Shelley and Kushida and I think the Forever Hooligans. Um, but, you know, top to bottom... It reminded me of some of those old WrestleManias, some of those old super cards where every match felt different. Every match had its own little style and its own little distinct niche. Uh, you had your, your brawlers and your hardcore and your flyers and your MMA, and, and you had your productions and your, you know, Nakamura with his sports entertainment esque etudeness. Um, and, and, and you had the That's Bullet a word. Club. You had the <laughs> Bullet Club. You had, you had all these different flavors come together for one great show. Uh, and of course, just for me, it was great to, to sit under the learning tree as both a fan as an announcer and listen to JR and Matt Stryker call the whole show. So it was something different and unique, but in, in a big positive way. And, and I would definitely be open to supporting future New Japan events. Mr. Dorst, all right. Uh, show of the year, I got to go with Beatles Love Cirque du Soleil at the Mirage in Vegas. <laughs> Uh, phenomenal! I recommend that. Now I've seen that show a couple of times. What's the Jumping yeah, Bomb yeah, yeah. Angels booked on that show? I can't tell. There's so many people flying around uh, that I have no idea. But the event of the year, the event of the year, as I like to call it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of go the opposite of Joe and go back in the box, like so far in the box that I'm right <laughs> in the middle of the box because I didn't get to see any uh, New Japan uh, pay-per-views, big events, whatever you want to call them. I didn't get to see any Ring of Honor pay-per-views. So so sue me. I didn't have time to watch them yet. I will. Sue me. Sue me. I dare you. Uh, so I got to I gotta look at the WWE. And, and as we thought kind of before Yo, all of this, it's, there's been some great stuff in WWE this year, I think. But overall, it's been a long time since I sat down and watched one event and, and really just said that was a great three hours spent. Uh, as, I, as I mentioned to Joe, the last, the last time I felt that way was Money in the Bank 2012. I, wherever we were, we were Fox and Hound. It's the one time I got Joe to come out, uh, out of his hiding place for a little bit and, and, and go have some fun. But it was a, that was a great event. You know, you had Daniel Bryan uh, winning the Money in the Bank, which was so sh- surprising at the time. CM Punk walking out with the title, leaving the company. It was shocking. Nothing really shocked me this year. Not even the Royal Rumble, which I would typically default to because 
everyone loves the Royal Rumble. Mm -hmm. Who's going to show up? What surprise appearances? That was even kind of a little underwhelming and, and predictable. So I got to go way inside the box and default to WrestleMania of this year. Just for, if for no other reason, just the huge, grandiose, Super Bowl-like feel that it has. It's hard to top that, uh, that special feeling you get. As wrestling fans, that is our Super Bowl. Uh, you never get excited. It's hard to sleep the night before. That whole day, you're watching the preview channel and, and and getting all hyped up for it, and watching your old, you know, old WrestleManias and your favorite matches. So, so just for lack of a better option, I hate to say, but uh, I, I just got to go with the, the granddaddy of them all, uh, WrestleMania. Fantastic. Well, folks, uh, if you agree, head on over to WrestlingMayhemShow.com and cast your votes. The final say is yours. Uh, stick around. We do have more videos here on this very channel. All you have to do is look around. It's probably on the page you're looking at right now.